For today's special Valentine's edition, I'm making pot roast. A little old school, but it's always popular. Hey everyone, and welcome to a special Valentine's Day edition of Home Style Cooking with Jen. Today, we're going old school with good old fashioned pot roast. This may not seem like the most romantic of dishes, but romance is whatever you make it. As always, the ingredients list is on the screen and you can find the full recipe at homestylecookingwithjen.com. Also, if you like this video so far, give me a good thumbs up. It really does help out the channel. And if you enjoy recipe videos, the occasional grocery haul, go ahead and hit the the subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell. And if you have any cooking related questions or would like to see a specific video on the channel, leave me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Okay, let's get started. Preheat your cast iron skillet over medium to medium high heat. This is important because we need to sear our roast to lock in the juices and add flavor. And I've said this before, but meat is what cast iron does best. While your skillet is preheating, it's time to prepare your roast. Check it over really well and trim off any large pockets of fat. We don't want to trim off all of the fat, but we don't need big chunks of it. This will help in the later processes so we don't have gristle or nastiness in our roast. Once your roast is trimmed to your liking, season it liberally with salt and pepper and then place it in your cast iron skillet. We are going to be searing each side of the roast for approximately four to five minutes. We're not trying to cook the roast through. We're just trying to get a good crust on all the sides. And don't forget the edges. This needs flavor too. While your meat is searing, it is time to prepare the vegetables. Half your onion and then slice into half moons. Arrange them in a single layer in the bottom of your crock pot. I'm using a seven quart crock pot because that is what works best for the size of roast that I have. Now it's time to dice your carrots. I don't particularly care for carrots, so I dice them very small, but if you enjoy them, you can have larger chunks. It's really up to you. Swirl them around in the bottom of your crock pot and make a single layer. This is going to be the base for your roast. Once your roast is finished searing, place it on top of your carrots and onions and try to get it as close to the center as possible. We're going to be encircling it with our potatoes, so you want to have enough room on all sides. Speaking of the potatoes, you want to dice your potatoes into even sized pieces. Again, I'm cutting these a little on the small side and it's more so it can fit around the roast than anything else. If you want bigger potatoes, cut bigger chunks. Just make sure that they are all about the same size. Now the vegetables are taken care of. It's time to mince your garlic and really mince this up well. It will dissolve during the cooking process, but you don't want to catch a large chunk of garlic. The next step is to continue the seasoning. Salt and pepper your mixture really well. The cooking the cooking process is very long, so we, so we need to make sure we retain as much flavor as possible. Take your horseradish, and it's actually easier to do this with a fork, and fork it over the meat and spread it out into a single layer. This will help infuse the meat and everything else with that horseradish flavor, and horseradish and beef is a classic combination. Now it's time to add the liquid. You can either add a cup of beef broth or beef stock, or you can do what I'm doing and use bouillon cubes or better than bouillon. To use better than bouillon, take a forkful of the paste and add it to a cup of warm water, then stir it until it dissolves. Once it dissolves, add it to the slow cooker as you would any other broth or stock. Cover your crock pot with a lid and cook on low for six hours. Once your six hours is up, it's time to take the lid off and prepare for the next step. As you can see, there can be a lot of steam, so be careful that your face is not right over your slow cooker. Very carefully remove the meat and set it on your cutting board to rest, and then strain out your vegetables from your liquid. Do not throw your liquid away. We're going to use this to make the gravy. To make the gravy, put your slow cooker liquid into a high-sided nonstick skillet and 
and then add your cornstarch slurry. To make your slurry, simply add a tablespoon of cornstarch with a tablespoon of water and mix it together really well. Stir the slurry and slow cooker liquid until it becomes thickened. You are looking for a gravy consistency. Also, stamp out any lumps that you find. We want a smooth gravy. For our pot roast, we did just spend six hours cooking it. We don't want to ruin all our hard work with a bad gravy. And you're done. All you need to do is add some of the vegetables and the meat to a plate, cover it with gravy, and serve. So I hope everyone has a wonderful Valentine's Day, stays happy, healthy, and as always, well fed.